All right, now let's continue talking about the BP uh, spill in the Gulf of Mexico. We've got an expert on the shipping industry. Cantor Fitzgerald analyst Natasha Boyden joins us. She covers the maritime industry and is a top-ranked analyst on 12 of the stocks that she covers, including Tsakis Energy Navigation. We saw some changes in the shipping industry after the Exxon Valdez spill. Is the BP oil spill likely to have any effect on what's happening in the shipping industry, Natasha? I think so. Not, not quite as much as the Exxon Valdez spill had because that came directly from a tanker. But what we are seeing, um, particularly on the margin, is that uh, vessels going into the Gulf and having to route around that area are being rerouted and also having to be cleaned as they go through there. So it's more expensive. They've got to be expensive. cleaned and it, if they have to reroute themselves, that it means takes longer. longer time. Absolutely. That's absolutely right. It takes days away from the availability of the vessels. And so, it, you know, you get less vessels available in a pool for charterers to charter the vessels. So it makes them more expensive. What about this whole issue of single hull mm -hmm. versus double hull? We've talked about that in the we past. Have. I mean, they're phasing all the single yes. hulls out anyway. Well, the IMO regulations state that it, by 2010, single hull vessels should be phased out, but it's up to the individual port states. The actual drop dead date is 2015. What I think we're going to see is a real flight to quality. I think anybody who is even remotely connected with the oil industry now has got to be taking a very close look at, say, single hull tankers and saying, do I really want to be operating these right now in this environment if something happens? Because that could be a liability. A huge liability. Let's talk about the tanker industry right now. How is it doing? I mean, are rates steady or are they increasing? They've actually been doing pretty well. Um, they've certainly come off the lows that they were on last year. It was pretty, pretty bad last year. We're seeing a lot of um, floating storage coming back onto the market due to the contango in the oil price. Contango. Explain what that is. That has to do with looking ahead into the future. Exactly. It, all it basically means is that the future oil price is higher than the current oil price. So what people are doing is they're storing oil uh, with the intent to sell it at a later date at a higher price. And that is what floating storage is. We're seeing a significant amount of floating storage coming into the market, particularly among the VLCCs, again, taking tonnage the away. very large crude carriers. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Ahead. With all no, the, that's uh, all right. <laughs> um, very large crude carriers and also sewers maxes. And so that's, again, taking tonnage out of the market and obviously forcing rates up. Um, the other issue we just discussed was scrapping. Scrapping has certainly been ahead this year from where it was last year. About seven, eight million tons already scrapped in the last Why six is months. that? Why is there so much scrapping going it's on? It's just the, the IMO regulations. And again... Getting rid of those single hull tankers. Exactly. Exactly. And then lastly, oil demand is actually uh, forecast to increase about 2% globally this year, which would take us back to pre-2006 level. And the other big kicker is that Chinese imports of oil are expected to rise about 18 percent this year. So still robust demand very in robust, China. Very demand in China, yeah. Let's talk about some of the companies that you cover. I want to get your thoughts on what's happening at crude carriers, yes. because this is a company that recently had an IPO. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a huge number of ships, no. but it's looking to acquire some. It is. It actually um, has almost doubled the number of vessels that it IPO'd with, which isn't much because it's going to get a six from three. But what we really like about them is they have very little debt, and their strategy is to operate their ships on the spot market, um, have very little debt financing, and really use equity to buy new ships and pay out a very, very attractive dividend. In fact, what you're going to be getting this year for just three quarters of the year, because they weren't public in the first quarter, is a 10% yield going up to 17% next year. The stock is trading below net asset value. It, it went public at 19, which by definition is NAV. It's trading, I think, below 17 right now. But when you talk about them actually buying more ships and using equity to do that, what are they going to have to do? Issue new shares? Won't that be shares. dilutive? Um, it, it, the current price, yes, um, because they're trading below NAV. So what I think Will, net asset value. Net, net yeah, asset value. Okay. So one would expect them to, you know, obviously try and wait and see if the price goes up. But obviously, if they come across a deal that is highly accretive, they could make that up with the acquisition, even if they do issue stock slightly below their NAV. All right. So they're going to try to take an opportunity, an opportunistic view of the tanker market. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Thank Natasha you. Boyden, coming to us from Cantor Fitzgerald, insight into the tanker industry and the shipping business.